opioid is bad too. Yeah. I, I think that's bad because everyone thinks, you know, in many cases, they think they're going to do away with pain. And literally the time is so short. If you take it for like two weeks, you're almost addicted to it. It's incredible when you- Oh, think. the whole, yeah, all of that is horrible. But how why do we allow that How did you get addicted? How, how did- No, I would just do cocaine. That was really, <laughs> yeah. So not that's just, yeah. That's down and dirty, right? Yeah. Is cocaine a stronger uh, oh, yeah. up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More than anything else you can think cocaine of. Cocaine will turn you into a damn owl, homie. You know what I'm saying? Huge news as Donald Trump masterfully uh, outmaneuvers Kamala Harris's big night at her mm, sparsely attended Milwaukee rally with many sections completely blacked out uh, so you couldn't sit there, blocked out, and many other sections uh, missing huge groups of people. Uh, taking the sizzle from that, taking the sizzle from the DNC uh, chain jingling, telling, uh, ah, I'm Obama. Remember me? Vote for this other person. Why? Because we're the same skin color, sort of. To suck all the wind out of their sails, releases a unexpected podcast with Theo Vaughn. Now, Theo Vaughn isn't the most popular podcaster, but he's definitely in the top 10. On top of that, why this is such a master stroke is that his audience is largely apolitical. So Donald Trump is going to get a chance to talk to several million people who aren't used to hearing about politics. Nobody watching the DNC right now is considering voting for Trump. But the millions of people that will see the very the various clips and the actual episode from Theo Vaughn might actually consider voting for him. In fact, it's been just two hours and the episode has nearly 150,000 views. Now we know that the actual view counter is much higher than this because it's delayed what it shows publicly uh, on YouTube. But more importantly, you'll see it has 66,000 upvotes to just 2.5,000 downvotes. If we look, you know, and compare and contrast, we can go to Bernie Sanders' episode, which is a full week old, which peaked at 1.6 million. I suspect the Trump interview will get three to five million. And it already has. 12,000 more likes than the Bernie Sanders interview. So, I mean, this episode is going to have hundreds of thousands of likes and it just, it only has 2.5 thousand dislikes. So it seems to be going over very good with the audience. And you see his, his uh, you know, the, the meltdown is sparse. It's few and far between. It's linked mostly in uh, Theo Vaughn's Reddit. You can see a lot of the comments. You see my comment, Theo's killing it. You can see even if we just sort by the top comments, right? The top comments. Only Theo could interview Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump in the same week, then turn around and interview a lunch lady and a mall cop. Truly inc incredible. Um, you know, how on earth is Theo just talk to POTUS and a dude on the street like the exact same manner? Um, you know, most of these people, you know, nobody's raging out. I mean, there's a few thousand dislikes, 2.5 thousand dislikes. But considering that Theo Vaughn has 3 million YouTube subscribers alone, that doesn't include, I don't know how many he has on Spotify, but his listenership, I assume, uh, is much higher on Spotify than YouTube because it's a podcast. Um, you know, I think ultimately this is going to be a huge boom for Theo Vaughn. And it gives Donald Trump an opportunity to talk to a bunch of people that he would never have reached any other way. I think this is great. I think Donald Trump should be going on, going on every major podcast. And he had some masterful words on this podcast, including challenging Kamala Harris to do the same interview. Absolutely masterful. Because all that does is remind people how cowardly Kamala Harris is, just how poorly of a communicator she is, and just how unlikable she is. By the way, since the DNC started, not that the, you know, these these betting sites are much more than just directional, but since the start of the DNC when that when Kamala Harris was supposed to get a bump, she went from leading Donald Trump by 4 points to trailing by 4 points and going on almost 5 points by tomorrow. She may be down by as many as 5 points in the in the Vegas markets. So that's an 8 First, an eight-point difference, um, absolutely bonkers to lose that much support in the week of the DNC. You can see a lot of the 
you know, a lot of the replies in here, a lot of the replies in here are, you know, relatively okay. There's a lot of people, you know, there's people who do melt, who are melting down about it. Like this person. Oh, they deleted the tweet. Ha 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 ha. They wrote, the fact that Trump only laughed like one time in an hour long conversation with Theo Vaughn gives me serious psychopath vibes. I don't know how that's possible. Well, they didn't survive a quote tweet from me. Uh, you can see a lot of people, you know, even when you look at Theo, he has the power, you know, he has the power to make people extremely likable, palatable. Watch him get Bernie Sanders to give Bernie. Bernie Sanders gives Trump his flowers here. Do you see why people like him? I do. You know, because he's very disarming. He gets up there and he says whatever the hell he wants. Yeah. He is not. Yeah, he doesn't seem like he's by the book. That was a thing. He is not that's by a, the book. Right. And so that's something, the same as you. It's like he's speaking for, it feels like they're speaking for themselves, right? Whether you agree with maybe what yep. they believe, they believe what they're saying. I think, and that, I think, comes through. I think you're right. Clearly to people. I think, you know, he's certainly unusual. Gets up there and he rants and he does his thing. And he's not necessarily, I'm sure his advisors go crazy. Yeah, but he's I not reading, you know, not reading off. You know, he doesn't have oh, Kid Rock is one of his advisors, you know? <laughs> hey, look, I love Kid Rock, but, you know, I don't know if every advice, you know. Every I mean, you know, Theo Vaughn has a great way to get great clips. I mean, you can even see him. Watch how Bernie Sanders reacts. And when he asked if Kamala is the best candidate, um, you know, Do you think that he Kamala doesn't believe is the best person to run against Donald Trump right now. Well, she is the person and that's and that won't change probably, huh? She she'll be the Democratic. He doesn't. So she is the person. So Bernie Sanders doesn't like her. Theo Vaughn drops us. His Reddit is is, you know, having a lot of infighting. You see how bad is the thing that he isn't picking a side? You see, no one complained last week. One week when he had a rabbi on, and the next week he had a Palestinian scholar on, whoever it was. The dude's asking honest questions. So a lot of people in the subreddit are even saying, like, hey, chill out. You know, the people who are really upset, you know, not everyone feels like they need to pick a side and circle jerk over it. He had to have the left-wing leaning episode first because if he dropped Donald Trump first, he'd be stepping into, quote, controversy territory. I don't really think so. You know, I think Kamala Harris opens her mouth and ends up in controversy territory. You get a lot of great sound bites out of this, too. I mean, listen to this. I mean, this is going to be heard by millions of undecideds. No, oh, it's a disaster. Biden, somebody invited Biden to the border, and they said he went to a Borders of Books, dude. And I was like, that's... Well, they invited her, and yeah. she went to a place that doesn't have a problem, yeah. you know. She's a disaster. She's She is the worst vice president. It's the worst administration yeah. in the history of our country. She's a part of it. And she won't do an interview. She would never do an interview like this. She won't I'd do love an her. interview. Yeah, I want to learn more about her. Well, I think you should ask her to come on. That 25-second clip, that 25-second clip is absolutely positively savage. Like, yeah, Trump doesn't really get any of Theo Vaughn's jokes. Theo, you know, Trump is old and he's tired and he's, he's you know, they have very different senses of humor. There's 50 years, probably 40 years between them. But you get, you know, good. Yes, invite Kamal on because you know why he says that is because now Kamal is either going to have to do it or deny it. You can see even in this Elon Musk poll tonight with 1.8 million votes, 77.6% of people saying they're voting for Trump over Kamala. Again, that's not geo-locked to the United States. You can also see President Trump and Theo Vaughn discuss the southern border crisis. Kamala's radical open border policies and how Trump administration is going to fix it. I mean, the fact that he gets to have access to Theo Vaughn's, uh, you know, platform to talk about real policy is absolutely better than any, you know, kind of circle jerk that Kamala Harris is going to do. You know, and you get this too. Again, millions of undecided voters are going to hear this segment. People in politics, many of them, not all of them are really liars but she's really alive. She made up a series of lots of different taxes that Trump's going to charge you on clothing. He's going to charge you on this or that. And actually, she's the one. Your taxes are going to go up by four times. And if the Trump tax cuts, because I got the largest tax cuts ever, but they expire in a number of months pretty soon, uh, she has to be able to uh, do something about it. 
and she's unwilling and incapable. I'll tell you what, if she's pre she's the worst vice president yeah. ever, he's the worst president ever, a deadly combination. I agree. And we have a country where the borders are bad, where the world is blowing up. You look at Israel, you look at Ukraine. Excellent. You know, excellent. Of course, you have this hilarious clip where Theo Vaughn's teaching Trump about blow. Well, how did, no, I would just do cocaine. That was really, well, yeah. So not that's just, yeah. That's, and that's, it was, down and, that's down and dirty, right? Yeah. And this he is, laughed. This, I mean, it was, yeah. But I, you it, don't anymore? No, I don't do it anymore, man. And I'm not doing is it. Is it too much? Too much to handle? Some of the stuff started to get a real rattle in it, too. I don't know where it, we were even getting it from in this country, but... Yeah, it started to make me feel like I was a mechanic or something. So the thing you go I'm back to then is alcohol for the most part. Right, yeah, but well, I, what I want probably is cocaine, but I know that if I have a drink, then it'll give me, it'll like be like, okay, well, I had a drink, then I can do this. Is cocaine a stronger uh, oh, yeah. up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cocaine so you, will so you're you, way up with cocaine more than anything else you can think cocaine of. Cocaine will turn you into a damn owl, homie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It'll You'll be... You'll be out on your own porch, you know. Yeah. And you'll, you <laughs> Trump doesn't get any of this. But, like, by the way, shout out to Trump's great tie. I mean, you get a lot of just great moments, you know. You see, like, again, Trump is so, he's just, here's another great, hilarious line. Great time. We had the greatest economy in history when I was president. We had oh, yeah. My cousin got a boat. Numbers. Yeah, we had the best job that. numbers. African American. <laughs> My God, I mean, Trump's just like, Trump's just like on. You know, he's just on point. But again, I talked about today when we look at 270 to win. You know, I was told by the mainstream media that Trump is in danger of losing Florida. Here's the primary voting numbers. 1.5 million Republicans showed up to vote in the Florida primar primaries for Rick Scott, getting 1.23 million votes. Then you go to the Florida Democrats, and they had 1,067,000. So half a million more Republicans showed up for the primary in Illinois, I'm sorry, in Florida. You know, I think like ultimately this is great. I think it'll do great numbers. We'll see throughout the days. And Trump needs to do more of this, lots more of this. Keep reaching out to undecided voters by going on podcasts and, and you know, Trump telling the story on Theo Fon's podcast about how he lost his brother to addiction humanizes him and makes him more real. You know, and that is what he needs. He needs to pull back the curtain on all this like mainstream media stuff that he's some sort of crazy monster. So absolutely congratulations to Theo Vaughn on the show. I'm sure it will do record numbers for him. The meltdown is real. Everyone's listening to that podcast. No one's watching the stupid DNC or Hacklin Kamala in Milwaukee.